Hey guys, how's it been going? This is Jacer. This is the last video about the advanced types in TypeScript. Um, uh, in the previous video, one mystery question was left untouched, which is the inference in the uh, conditional types, right? So let's jump into the examples directly. This is the example. Okay, here is a, a conditional type. T extends, this is the template. If T matches this one, we infer this first uh, property A and then infer the second property B and then we return the use, uh, 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 the U. So actually this means we get the type of property A and property B, B right? Okay, so when we are using it like this, uh, the passing type is a, B, both are string. So we, when we get it, we get T1, we get the string because A string, B is string. And here it says uh, we can support multiple candidate for the same type verb in covariant pos positions causes a union type to be inferred. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this is second sample example, A is string, B is number because it's a union, so we get a union of string and number. This looks uh, looks uh, straightforward, except that we don't know what the COVID variant uh, it means, right? We will, jump, we will come back to that later. Okay, this is the second example, but for cases that uh, there is an intersection, uh, a co contravariant positions like this, this looks the similar. Uh, the template is A is a function, we, we infer the type of the parameters of the first function and the uh, type of the parameters from a second function and the return the u, right? We intuitively same think that it might return a union of these two types. Let's take a look. This is the first type, a uh, first usage. Uh, the first type function accepts a string and it returns nothing. And the second one returns a string, returns nothing. So we might think, okay, string, uh, union string, your string. And let's take a look at the second example. The first one is a string to void. The second one is number to void. We might think, okay, this is a union. So string, again, string, union, number, but it actually never. It means in the function parameters case, it actually use intersection, not union. So here it's actually string intersects with string. So actually it's the same because they are the same. So the same result is yield. But uh, for the two types, they are different. It actually never because intersection, there is no intersection between uh, string and number. So how do we understand w what it is? Um, um, this is actually very, uh, a deep topic. Let's first jump into the case. What is covariant and what is uh, contravariant, right? Okay, so here, uh, to do that, uh, we first take a look at exa an example to, sh to, to see what is going on about uh, the uh, covariant and the contravariant. Okay, okay, let's open the background, uh, playground. Okay, here's the type. Oh, okay. Uh, class animal class dog extends animal so we have a animal and we have a dog extends animal and cat extends animal yeah this is a uh, pretty straightforward right and then we have a uh, three functions a uh, function is the first one is actually we get an animal Hand, process an animal and then process a dog and then process a cat right this is three in the functions and then what uh what uh, we're getting okay it's strict function types okay we get the uh strict function types okay first thing is that we said the function mm, dog function two to function one mm? Why well, there is no error? There should be an error. Oh, ah, because they are the same actually. I'm sorry. Uh, bark. Let's say bark is a function, 
And the meow. Okay. So, dog has a bark method and a cat has a meow method. And now, it says the function animal, when we, that's, uh, this is the first one, function, function. But we cannot assign F2 to F1. But we can assign F1 to F2. Hmm. You see, you see what is ha happening? <laughs> that means, uh, the, even though dog is a subtype of animal, but the function which accepts dog as a parameter is not a subtype of this. The function accepts animal as a parameter. Right? Okay, let's write it down. Dog is, I would say, subtype to animal. But dog, like a function, is not a function of animal. Uh, the subtype of function of animal actually actually it's the opposite so animal is uh, a parameters of animal is par subtype of parameters of dog so we see that uh, actually f2 cannot be assigned to f1 but f1 could be assigned to f2 so why is this and uh, the, the second one f1 f2 f3 it's an error because they are, they are uh, I would say, they are sibling type, right? They both extends animal, but they have nothing to do with, with each other. So F3 to F2, they are also wrong. So why is this? Uh, to understand this, let's take a look at the example here. This is a document, uh, this article. I will append links below. Okay, let's begin. So uh, this means A is a subtype of B. Uh, this means a function, which A is a parameter. And B is the return type. Uh huh. This means X has type A. So we have these three types: a greyhound and dog. Animal. Dog is part of. Dog belongs to animal. Greyhound belongs to dog. So, um, yeah. So greyhound is a subtype of animal, right? Yeah, it's obvious. So uh, there are four functions below. And uh, suppose we have a type of dog to dog, which one is the subtype of dog to dog? That means the function, not the type itself. Okay, the function dog to dog accepts a dog and returns a dog. So the first one, greyhound. Greyhound. You might think that uh, this function is assignable to this dog to this function, but actually, uh, it doesn't because there are other kind of dogs, right? If they're a function. If you're this function call, it means this fun this type actually uh, w might be used to, to call on any dogs, right? Greyhound is not any dogs, so it's not okay. But if the the, uh, the greyhound animal is the same, greyhound is not any any dogs. What about animal to animal? If you're handling a dog, okay, you only call the dog. You you would call the uh, dogs method to all the dogs. So animals actually includes all the dogs. So this part is okay, but return value, you say return a dog, and you actually the this function type returns animal, which is not dog, right? It, it might includes cats. If you want to call dog uh, dot uh, bark, it won't. It will fail, right? So this won't will, will not be okay. An animal a greyhound, uh, any dog is in animal because you you only call the the method of dog. This is okay, and you return a greyhound because this function might call call the function of dogs. Greyhound is dog, so this is okay actually. So you now you see dog is a subtype of animal, but function if we have a function which accepts a dog as the uh, arguments, animal to greyhound is subtype of dog, right? Yeah, uh, if we have something uh, like this, okay, this is something more uh, abstractive. It means if A subtype of B is function, if the function is subtype of function B, then it is a uh, covariant. They have they, they are moving around the same direction, right? 
But for our case here, actually, it's uh, opposite, right? If A is a subtype of B, and we have a function, B uh, accepts the parameter as B, is subtype of a function which accepts as A as a parameter. So it's contra variant. So this is there are two other types, is invariant and bivariant, uh, which are beyond the scope beyond the scope of this video. Uh huh. Uh, where, where, oh, oh, uh, okay. Where is it? Oh, I haven't read this yet. Uh, oh, here. Function parameters are bivariant. Actually, this is already uh, in a nudist type script. This is uh, becoming uh, contravariant. Okay, so we know what is covariant and a contravariant. Invariant is means uh, they don't belong to each other. There is no relationships between each other. Those no, no subtype of either A to B or B to A. And bivariant means they both subtype to each other. Okay, so for example, if we have a list, right? If a list doc would be subtype of list animal, right? Uh, obvious for each item dog is uh, a subtype of animal. So list dog obviously is list of animals. So let's go back to the uh, example here. We have a function except an animal. This a function except a dog, except uh, a function except a cat. F1 cannot be assigned with F2 because F2. Oh, what's this? Hmm? What the fuck? Okay. Actually, because this function is not a subtype of F1, but F1 is subtype of F2. That's why. Uh, that's why we we said. Um. Uh, here, function type parameters positions are checked contra variantly. All right. So now, uh, the parameters are contra variant. Understand? Okay. A little mind twisted, right? Mind twisting. Um, let's suppose that uh, the function is a pipe. Okay. It's a pipe. Like it's a big circle. And there are water flowing, and then uh, flow some water out, right? Now, if we need to fit another pipe in it, what would be? Okay. Oh, this is a genius. I I think I'm. Uh, I think I have a very cool uh, metaphor of this one. Okay. Let's suppose that uh, funk type is like a big one. Okay. Here's a pipe. Okay, this is the entry and this is the exit. Let's say exit is here. Um, something like this. And this, right? Okay, if we need to fit another pipe, like uh, replace this pipe, what we would uh, what what we would do? Because uh, because there will be, might be some other things fitting, uh, connecting to this pipe here, right? So your new pipe must return something smaller than the uh, than the original pipe. You could make it smaller, right? Yeah, this is uh, this is smaller, and so if there's another pipe uh, uh, using using this one. They could just uh they, they they could just work right, okay, um. Okay, like this, and uh, the same. There were maybe there might be some uh, pipe uh, uh, connecting before this one right, like this, like something like this. So if we repeat replace a new pipe into this, you must be what. You must be small here one. You must be oh I'm sorry. Okay, the pre one is within it. Because using using parameters. Okay, now 
you must do, what to use? You must use something bigger than this and smarter than the original one, right? Bigger. Yeah. So this is function. For the entry side, you must be bigger, but for the exit, you must be smaller. So that's why it's contra variant. Okay, let's go back to our uh, infer here. So now let's take a look why we would use the union type for the covariant positions and the uh, uh, intersection type for contra variant. For, to solve this problem, we need to take a look at how the infer works, okay? The Actually, the pull request is, uh, I will put the link in the description. This is original pull request. Okay, for for our inf for return type like this, we say we have a template like this, we add infer keyword, and then we match it against the type, and then return the uh, uh, matched infer type, right, R. So what is really going on? Uh, internally. So actually, the steps are written very pretty well. First, we given the types T and U are the instantiations of T and U where all occurrence of type parameters are replaced with any. Uh -huh. So if T is not assignable to U, the conditional type is resolved to Y. So it says if these um, matched or not. So the template this, right? And this, if it is belong extends this is true, Oh, okay, here, I'm sorry. If it is just true, uh, what, what is it? It's not, so if it's not true, the Y is used. If the most permissive, permissive instantiation of T is not assignable, we know that no instantiation will be and we can just uh, resolve to Y, right? If this is false, return Y, okay. Next, for each type variant introduced by an inferred declaration, which is R, with you collect a set of candidate types by inferring from T to U. And using the same inference algorithms as type inference for generic functions. Okay, so it will actually, when using infer, it will collect all the possible data types, uh, list, them, list, them up, uh, list them up. Uh huh. And then for given infer type variable V, uh huh. Like for R, uh, for R here, if any candidates were inferred from covariant positions, like position here, uh, this is not, uh, this is not a contravariant. It's covariant. Okay, so the type inferred for V is a union of those candidates. Uh huh. Otherwise, if any candidates were inferred from contravariant positions, the type inferred for V is an intersection of those candidates. Otherwise, the type inferred V is never. So, actually, the TypeScript does something uh, very, uh, not very, uh, not that complicated. It actually just at least, okay, you said it, we infer it. Now I will give you an infer type, right? Say, let's say the type is T1. Now we, what we do, actually you say, then, Give the T, oh, I'm sorry. Given the type T, that is station of T, where all inferred types served are replaced with the types inferred in the previous step. Uh -huh. If T uh, is definitely assignable to U, then conditional type resolved to X is resolved. Uh -huh. The definite assignable relationship is the same as regular, except blah, 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 blah. So actually, it will try to put the possible types back and, and check the host type system works or not, right? Okay, so for the tape, for the case here, it says, okay, the string, is the string working? Uh, okay, the here, the po all the possible type, it gets the string number, uh, put it back. So the type here actually become, uh, I'll, write, I'll try to, uh, here, okay. It actually refers infer it guesses and so he put back put it back which is string number and here is the string number right and then put it against check it if it is matches or not string belongs to okay string extends string or number this is okay and b string string number okay right okay there is no Okay, we 
teeth either like this. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it should not be like this. Should be there. Should be some instance. Uh, extends. Hmm. Cannot find you. Okay. Uh, a string. Okay. I say, if a string. Let's say the foot T is. Uh, T1. String. Yeah. So, if we use this, it would fit. I mean, if you use something string, both string, it will not fit, actually. You cannot put this one, string number, back to this one, right? Yeah, you see. Never. Right? So, it doesn't... So, this is why it's used union. It will make the whole type system work. It tried to... I try the best effort. So, if this is string number, the string of uh, union of string number is used, and then this actually try to make this t extend work. That's why you will get the string number. Now, go back to this case, uh, the function. Why it's never? Because, as we said, in this function. Uh, okay, let's copy back here. Copy it here. Okay, if the string is le this, let's replace the infer. Uh huh. String string, it matches, right? This is matches, totally matches. So it's boolean. Okay, the next one is string. This is matches. Uh huh. And this is number, does not matches. So it's never. So there will be no, no. There will be no type that could match right according to our cases if we want to match there will be a subtype using a number right subtype of number here there's nothing it will be never so it's never it never be true so there's another case like uh, if there is an object here okay what we can do now this is the true this is this is a subtype it's itself right it's the equals and then this is a subtype of this one, right? According to our uh, explanation, explanation, this is super type of string. So the function is a subtype. So it's contravariant. So it is, this is true now. So what do we get? So we get it's uh, the, okay, I'll get R, okay. Uh, so this is matches. So we could actually, this should be get a string. Now, now let's infer it. Um... Infer R, infer R, this is R. Yeah, a string intersect with object. Uh, mm? Shouldn't it be a string? Huh? Okay, let's say const T string st T. Okay, T, 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 T2, mm, T, T1, T2 equals T, mm? oh, I should do it reversely, okay, this is T2, string, T, this should be the same, I think, yeah, you see that there's no problem, we can assign T to T1, and also sign to T1 to, oh, shit. Oosh, I'm stupid. Okay, T. One is a string. Oh, no. Ah, okay. Declare it. So T1 is string. We could sign to T1 to T. So they are the same, actually. 
um if um okay if there is a, this like a string and then here is a string b string now this is more obvious t1 2 should be intersect huh? so it should be uh, intersect intersect uh okay like this mm -hmm. ah wait a minute uh this is a type so this intercept so it should be a b yeah they should be the same yeah 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 okay this is true the object so yeah this is to object type the intercept means they should both have these types uh the properties and if they are a string and number a type object then they should huh? wait a minute so if something like this uh i think number is not okay right yeah number cannot be assigned to type string uh-huh yeah so that's that reminds us why this is um a3 why why string intersects with object is uh, string and this object intersects with the extra property uh is this one that's about that's the basics of typescript it's like typing so yeah Uh -huh. So actually, this one actually is, as we said, in types TypeScript, it only checks if the interface exists or not. So actually, this is belongs to I would say this right. It's a subtype of A three because A is in it. So they any player. Places where A3 is used could be uh, A3 and B3, this one, could be used also. Yeah, so this is the doc typing. Um, okay. So finally, we understand why uh, for function, it's never, but for uh, an, an object property, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's union. Okay. How is it? Uh, I hope it helps. I took some time to understand what is going on. And after I get it through, I find it very, I would say, interesting. And it uh, certainly makes my understanding, uh, makes me understanding the TypeScript better. So I'm still, there is a, a lot to learn. Yeah. Hope it helps. See you next time. Bye-bye.